This is the slow wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 98 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In today's episode, I will give you an update on my knitting antics of the last two weeks. And then we're straight into layer cake with some very exciting new launches. At least I'm very excited about them. And I hope you are too. The key word is stretch. But first, my knitting. Well, I've been pretty monogamous for the last two weeks. I think I told you last time that um, I went ham with a piece of crochet and my guess is due to the um, lack of experience have I have with crochet, I probably hold the uh, hook a little bit too tight. I'm left-handed, hence the left-hand movements. And it's given me a little bit of repetitive strain injury, well, a little bit, quite painful repetitive strain injury at the base of my thumb. So I haven't done any more crochet for the last two weeks and have just concentrated on my knitting. Although I have to be quite careful, I find, with how I hold my knitting needles to ensure that that doesn't aggravate the pain at the base of my thumb. Have I stopped to give it a break? No, I can't. Such is my addiction. Knitting still is my jam. It makes it helps me relax and I'm always so full of ideas as to wanting to see what happens with the piece that I'm knitting and how that um, turns out as well as future knitting dreams that I've got lined up and I can't get them on the needles fast enough, literally. So um, I don't know whether I was completely finished last time I showed you this. I don't think I was. I am now. This is a little kind of skew knitted. I was going to say triangle, but it's actually more of a crescent shape. And now that it's finished, I can show you a little bit more clearly what its shape is. See, it's more of a crescent. And the way it works, or the way this pattern works, it's not actually a proper pattern. It's just based on a recipe that I found where you end up increasing your knitting on one side. It must be this side. Yes, so you increase your knitting on one side and you decrease on the other side. So on the one side, you end up adding two stitches every other row. And on the other side, you decrease one stitch. You So you end up with a diagonal piece of knitting. And as you progress, your uh, the stitches that are on your needle, I'm trying to hold it in a way. Yes, it is like this. Your, the stitches on your needle end up, imagining this section isn't there, end up looking or running like this. If this is my needle, then you're decreasing on this side, you're increasing on that side. So that's how you end up with a skew piece of fabric that gets wider slowly but is skew because you're decreasing at the same time. You're just increasing faster than what you're decreasing. So at some point you can then just cast off and that gives you an asymmetrical piece of knitting because you've got one side that is a long um, edge where you're increasing. And then by casting off, you end up kind of cutting what could have been a triangle short because you're not at a 90 degree angle if you see what I mean. But what I did instead was I um, I ended up very gradually casting off my stitches and I kept so effectively knitting short rows which lengthened the second half of what turned out half of the um, little shawl. So as a result my shawl is pretty symmetrical. So this is the point where I changed over and started that slow 
row, slow edge of decreases, which kind of run along here, if you like, with the short rows. So that ends up then making a nice little crescent shape. So um, I wasn't done yet with that whole concept. I wanted to do another one, start again in the same way. And um, I also really liked the fact that with the yarn that I had used here, it was um, a lace weight yarn. Uh, they were all discontinued yarns. It was all deep stash. I'm still on deep stash at the moment. It was um, a discontinued lace weight yarn from Cephalopod, an American dyer, which was a 50% silk, 50% yak blend. And I was holding that together with a very, very fine, very thin, 100% silk, variegated yarn that was um, uh, made by uh, Fiber Spades years ago. So that's what this is. I've now kept going and I am now knitting with two yarns held together again. One is a very thin, it's a wild silk with little neps in it by uh, Texair Yarns, which I ended up buying again years ago, not really knowing what I was going to do with it. But um, I'm, I'm just, I still love yarns that look like they were made from <laughs> swept up leftovers in um, in a spinnery in a, a, a woolen mill. And so this reminds me of that. It's an undyed wild silk, raw silk, with little colored neps in it. And I'm holding that together with a bilum yarn. Um, if I have a picture of the colorway, if I can find a picture of the colorway anywhere online, I will show it here. But it's a yarn that starts in a very bright, acidic, yellowy chartreuse colorway. And then very gradually, let me see if I can hold it up in a way that you can see a little bit, very gradually goes to almost like an undyed natural color, virtually the same color as that silk, which is why I liked the idea of knitting them together so much. So if I get my threads out of the way, then you can see here that we're going from the very bright green gradually to an undyed. And from the undyed, that then goes to almost like a gray, medium gray. And the medium gray then gradually goes into um, a lilac. I can't really show you the lilac yet because it's not, well, you can see a little bit that it's going lilac. The lilac is going to get a little bit more punchy than it looks here. And what I've done in this case is, again, I've done the short rows that I did as a cast off on this one. But in this case, I did German short rows. That's why the natural kind of undyed color here gradually changes in this point to the darker gray and the uh, towards the lilac, but not here. And after finishing my short rows, I've then just now, where you can see that row of holes, I've just started knitting back and forth again. And you can see just, just on the edge here that I'm actually going from that more neutral color into the start of the lilac. And this is going to be a border that is going to have a form of lace in it that I'm kind of working out on the hop. It's going to have a form of lace in it with laddered stitches rather than beautifully lace knitted stitches. It's going to look a little bit deconstructed. So I've got a section here where I've started to do um, knit two togethers with yarn overs in the middle to make a, a little hole. And that hole is going to be the bottom of a row of laddered stitches. And I'm going to do that in quite an irregular way and then gradually do more and more of the holy bits where I show, where I drop the stitches with the idea of that edge looking lacy, but in a deconstructed way. So rather than very pretty and very regular and with the nice flowing lines that you normally get in lace, it's going to look quite raggedy and irregular. That's the idea. So. I'll keep you posted and let you know how I do with it. 
fingers crossed that that's going to work. I should have be I should be able to show you the finished shawl next time. But that's all I've done. So uh, that's all I'm working on. I'm going relatively slowly uh, because I'm also dedicating a bit of time every day at splitting a hank of the art yarn cashmere two ply that um, uh, tribe yarns sell. And that is um, a very loosely twisted set of two pretty much, um, uh, how do you call it again? When you have single ply, goodness me, single ply yarns that are loosely twisted together and then dyed. So what I'm doing is I'm untwisting them into their separate single plies. And it's an absolute labor of love because when you see the two strands held together, you think, well, there's hardly any twist in there, but there's actually more twist than you expect. So I'm literally having to do almost, well, about two or three foot of yarn at a time that I can undo from my Swift, untangle and wind into little balls. It's going to take me probably a couple of weeks of maybe a couple of hours a day. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do about two hours a day of separating these two plies, all with a view of getting twice the amount of length that I can then combine with a different fiber and knit, hopefully, a garment out of. Oops, my light has just died on me. Hopefully, the camera, the uh, camera on my phone will compensate. So I guess that's my light telling me that I'm done now. So I apologize. <laughs> that was not a lot of light that I got for quite a lot of hours of charging. Anyway, the layer cake section of the podcast is next. No light problems there. So I will update you on my knitting again next time. For now, let's get stuck into layer cake. This is part of it. That's part of it. I hope you enjoy. Oh gosh, I've been so excited to share this with you. I'm right. I'm wearing. I'm, I'm writing. I'm wearing my wrap dress in the magpie stripe, and I'm wearing that more or less as a duster over the big launch this week. I'm wearing a play suit made out of the organic cotton jersey that we use for the cocoons. I mean, how much more comfortable can you get, right? Of course, I will take off my wrap dress to show you this in all its glory. What do we think? This is a size one in the regular length. I've made a series of these play suits in the regular length and in the petite length, not in the long one. We don't do that many long ones for obvious reasons. And wearing this a bit cropped like I am doing with this regular length actually looks really nice. And because it is such a comfortable wear, um, it can be worn like this, slightly cropped, and then in the in the winter with booties or high shoes or whatever, however you like to wear them. And depending on the feedback, I may start making these in long length as well. We'll see how we go. But for now, petite length and regular length. What I'm wearing here is the size regular in a, the size one. We're doing the same sizes as the regular layer cakes. And as you know, I'm kind of on the cusp between a size one and a size two. So that means that this has ever so slightly negative ease on me. It's slightly fitted, but only slightly. So as a result, it's not really pulling in and it's not really kind of showing all at my waist and my bum with in full contour. It still skims, as you can see nicely over my hips and bum. So depending on your size, of course, I've got all the exact measurements of the garments when they're not stretched on the listing of the website. So you can compare that and compare that with your normal layer cake size. I would say wear your normal layer cake size, but if you are on the cusp between sizes, 
you may be able to safely size down and go for a slightly more fitted look if that's what you're after. Because of course, I'm gonna take the opportunity to show you both lengths. Even though I'm tall, it'll still give you an idea of the difference that it makes to the proportions. And I'm also going to show you two different sizes. I'm wearing the size one now, slightly more fitted, but I'm also going to show you the size two and show you that you don't have to wear it completely fitted for it to make a really nice flowy contour around your body. So this is the first color, obviously. And um, the color is called Berry. It's called after the berry color that we had in the linen as well, because they are virtually identical. They're very, very similar. So they can be worn together very nicely as well. So Berry and what I've got sitting here next to me is the second color, which is going to be Damson. Got to be because it's virtually identical to the Damson linen. Then... Um, there's a berry play suit in the petite length there. This, by the way, is the other new garment, the vest. So it's a, they're both are sleeveless. They both have exactly the same neck and uh, shoulder and, and uh, armhole treatment. As you can see, the shoulders are nice and wide. So if you're wearing a more substantial bra or a bralette with wider straps, then it'll be covered completely by the straps and your bra will not be showing anywhere. It also has higher armholes, as you can see here. <laughs> I'm promising through it all because I'm so overexcited. Anyway, gives you all the um, information up front so that you don't have to hang around for the whole episode if you don't fancy it. So the other thing uh, to mention, I'll talk more about the vests, but so there's the damson, then um, the uh, the berry play suit in the short um, uh, length, and then the next color is another new color called silver. And I'm going to show you our silver gray. I'm going to show you that in more detail in a minute. And then there's a fourth color as well coming up. But first off, um, the um, berry in the play suit. There are four different colors in the play suits. This one, the damson. The third color will be navy, and I haven't got those yet. They're being finished as we speak, and very excited, black. So black jersey play suits in the same four colors, um, at the same four sizes as we normally have in the layer cake, and in the same four sizes. So zero, one, two, and three. Then um, the uh, two lengths, the petite and the regular length, and then four colors in total. This one, berry, the damson, navy, and black. <laughs> they are ready, the, the damson and the berry are ready to ship immediately. If you uh, pre-order effectively the navy and the uh, black, navy or black, then um, any order that contains a navy or black uh, play suit will be shipped in the next two or so weeks. I will keep you posted on that, of course. But starting off, and of course, this is like you're completely unrestricted in your movement. It is an absolute joy to wear. I've been wearing this um, almost all week because I received these um, at the start of the week and it is now Thursday. So I've been wearing this for a couple of days straight and you can't really, apart from any stains I've made on it, <laughs> you can't really see that I've been wearing it, that as you know, if you already have bought any of this jersey, then you know that the fabric has absolutely no memory due to the 5% elastane that is in it. It just wears and wears. You don't wear knees in it. You don't wear a saggy bum in it. It just springs back to its original shape. And that's all thanks to the very tight knit and that 5% elastane that it has in it. So. I'm so thrilled with this fabric. So on to the next one. I'm going to show you the same color in the same size, but the petite length so that you can see the difference between the two. Oh, there's that thumb again, it's still bothering me. So here's the size one in the petite length. Just about calf length on me, still very wearable. But in my case, because it is shorter, as well as more fitted around my body, 
I would end up feeling more comfortable sizing up. So still wearing the petite length, but then going to a size two petite. Just the idea of having a bit more fabric around my body to uh, cover the bits that I'm not particularly wanting to put on display and just having a little bit extra fabric to play with. But that's a personal thing because really it doesn't look bad at all. As you can see, of course, that crotch ends up being higher. It ends up sitting just above my knees when it's zipped up. When I unzip it, which I can actually do for the film, for the video rather, I can show you what it then does. So the whole thing drops, of course, a little bit as you are used to. And uh, with the open zip, so you're back to the dress that you just throw on over the top of your head and undo the zip when you go to the loo rather than having to take the whole thing off and the other thing that I've of course got here specifically to show you is a garment it's a new garment for the future so I'm not going to show off the garment but I'm showing off the color because this is berry and see the berry against the um, pretty much same color but solid in the um, jersey I think is fantastic so if you have one of the berry um, love tunics, for example, which was one of the colors that we did in the berry, that, or one of the garments that we did in the berry, then that would be fantastic to wear over the top of your jersey play suit and have a wonderful set together. So, berry shown off, petite uh, play suit in the size one shown off. Now I'm going to put on a petite play suit in the size two to show the difference. And I'll change colors as well and put on damson. Here we go. And here it is. Damson, petite length, size two. And can you see what I mean with it all being a little bit more generous around? There is all of a sudden there's some positive ease. The armholes are slightly lower because, of course, they have to accommodate a bigger torso. So we proportion them up to make them look good on bigger frames. And because there's a little bit more fabric everywhere, it hangs down a little bit further. So that makes it also ever so slightly longer. Of course, the more you fill, the shorter the garment gets. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're sizing up or down. And I can also feel that difference when I'm closing the zip because there's a bit more fabric all around. It also feels a little bit more generous going into the zip, which then pulls a little bit less on the fabric around my bum and thumb. And I think that's one of the reasons that I just feel a little bit more comfortable in that size too. But of course, it's a personal thing. I'm just trying to point out and illustrate how it feels on me and how I believe it looks on me as well to give you as much information as I can. Of course, I'll show the back as well. Damson in a size of two petite. I'll throw some different garments over the top. I've got some dusters that I pulled out that I think are in really nice colors to wear with the ones that we got here in the play suits. Of course, I'm sorry that I can't show you the navy and black play suits yet, but I hope you can imagine what they're gonna look like combined or based on what, what I'm showing you here. And um, I get a fair amount of stock in, but of course numbers are limited. So if you think you're keen, don't delay too long because the next um, production run that I'm gonna do in Jersey is very likely not going to be in exactly the same colors. So I don't know how quickly, it all has to do with size and investment and money available to invest in the uh, production and in the stock. So um, I'll replenish as soon as I can when things run out, but don't be too disappointed if I can't replenish straight away. I try and replenish as fast as I can if demand outstrips supply. Right, <laughs> let me show you some nice linen colors to wear with Damson. Of course, I've got to start with our Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> the large bright check, which of course goes with everything. So that's a bit of a dead cert and you can't go wrong with this. But I still wanted to show you how lovely it looks because of the, all the blues that are in there together with the, the, the Damson play suit. 
Move it. This is the um, uh, medium length, by the way, so that also gives you an idea of how long the medium length and how much the medium length covers of the petite play suit. Because if you are not as tall as me, then all that changes when you wear this combination is the amount of bare leg showing beneath the play suit. But where the um, uh, duster hits the play suit is going to be exactly the same place because of course they're lined up at the top so they are the same proportion if you like it's just leg that disappears when this is worn by a person of different stature to mine next lovely chartreuse chartreuse always uh, a good one to wear with blues of course because there is a hint of blue in there because of course chartreuse is a green that is made with yellow and blue and look what it does to the damson it makes it go ever so slightly tealy it pushes it towards the green which is really interesting because when you see the damson linen which is a combination of blue and a pinky pinky purple then there's no yellow in there but shown with this it pulls it a little bit into the teal spectrum, which I think is really interesting. So before showing you the damson linen, I want to show you two other things. First of all, what does a long duster do with this petite play suit? And then I'll change to the medium length play suit so that you see how they relate to each other. So long duster, petite play suit, petite play suit size two, long duster, in the um, chartreuse and as you can see the play suit and the duster are virtually the same length so if you wear size two petite play suits and they're full length then the long duster is going to be full length on you as well so if you want a difference in length between a petite play suit and a duster then go for the medium length that we recently introduced with the duster you then of course have the option of putting ties in or not I tie, I'll tie this up as well, so you can see what that does. There we are. Of course, you see more of the play suit in the front because of that sweep of a hemline. So that's something that you can play with when you wear the duster closed with a play suit underneath. Then of course you can play with which which colors you wear together and how they play together by itself this is an unbelievably comfortable combination of course because i'm wearing jersey on my body i have absolute freedom of movement and then i have this beautiful statuesque sweeping duster over the top which turns it into potentially depending on what color combination you choose potentially quite a festive or formal outfit even though what I'm wearing underneath is super comfortable. And you can then, of course, open the uh, coat back up and see how it wears together. Now, I'm going to keep the duster the same and change this play suit for a size two in the medium length. See how that looks in terms of how the lengths compare. And here is the same long duster with the medium length play suit. As you can see, it's now uh, four inches, I think in total longer than the, um, the previous one, the petite one, and it is sticking out further everywhere. When I've got it closed, same story. I won't, have to, I won't close it again completely. You can see the difference. So let me now show you the damson linen over the top of the damson Play suit, Damson jersey. Here we go. So this is not a fit that I would advocate at all. This is too small on me. This is the size zero um, love tunic. The only reason I can get into it is because we have that very generous cut of the uh, dolman sleeves. But if you see it in the mirror, you can see that the bust lines are too high for me here because my bust is too big and too low for this size. But ignoring that, I just want to show you how close the damson linen color is visually when seen from a little bit of a distance 
to the damson jersey. It's unbelievable how close they are. Even though when you look up close, then the um, damson uh, linen is made out of, I said a blue and a pinky purple. It is definitely a pinky purple, but it's not a blue. It is the um, teal. And that explains why this blue looks a bit more greenish against the chartreuse. It's a blue that has a bit of green in it, clearly, because it's picking up from the green in the teal of the linen damson. So I think this is a wonderful combination. I hope you do too. For all of you damson linen uh, love tunic wearers, I highly recommend this combination, although, of course, with that pink in it, you can also contrast with the berry. That's also a nice combination. Anyway, um, I will also show a more neutral color with the damson. I've got a, a charcoal um, duster that I can quickly throw on and then we'll move on to the vest colors. Charcoal is promised, as you can see, and as always, Colors that can go quite bright, depending on what you combine them with, can also calm down quite a lot when you wear them with uh, more neutral colors. And that's one of the assets, I think, of this particular color of bluey green, particular color of this damson, is that it goes in different directions depending on what you wear it with. It is a blue, but it can go quite tealy. There's a little bit of green in there. And it can also go a little bit more grayish when you wear them with those kind of colors. Of course, the other thing you can do, because it's got some green in it, is wear it with browns. So um, I didn't point that out with a large bright check, but you can imagine, hopefully, that... Uh, well, mind you, I'll, I'll see if I've got anything in this small check, which is a little bit more autumnal in its colorway and goes a little bit more into the browns and rusts. And let before we go do the vests, let's see if I've got a small check to combine with this damson to show you how that looks. Yes, I found a mini tabard. This is a size three mini tabard, so it's really oversized, but it perfectly illustrates my point in terms of the color families that you can re see represented in it. And also, bit of a discovery, isn't this a fun combination? So having the slightly wider uh, shoulder bands of the play suit really nicely frames the slightly narrower shoulder bands of the um, mini tabard. Same would go, of course, for a regular tabard or a smock. They would look fantastic as well over the top. And um, I'm just, I've just been grabbing um, uh, dusters to illustrate different colors, but I'll see if I've got uh, a tabard or a smock to show as well. Still, let's move on to the vest, shall we? I'll start with the fourth color of the vest that I haven't mentioned yet. And it is the, um, the gray, the medium gray color that we have in the baggies as well. As you know, we've got the slate and then this is the medium gray. And that medium gray is now also available as a vest. So you can wear it as a set that is not dissimilar to the play suit, of course, in a really light color. And that's why I thought I'll show the matching set here because out of the four colors of vests, because the other three colors that are available in the vest are right here. So it's that silver gray, the uh, damson here, and then the berry in the middle. And then this is color four, the medium gray. That medium gray is the only color that matches the colors of the baggies. The others are all different colors, new colors and different from the baggies. Of course, they can be worn with different color baggies, but they don't match the color of the baggies. They're specifically chosen to match and go with the different linens and to contrast with the baggies of the cocoon range, except for this one. So available in the four sizes. This is the size one. I'll show you a size two as well in the vest. And it's got the same sweeping hemline that you've seen in the um, love tunic. It's also got those same um, 
uh, seams that the love tunic has and this middle seam in the in the back and I think it goes really really well with the cocoon baggies of course they the choice for this color is to go for something really neutral that you can wear underneath and with other garments and then have some other colors that are a little bit more outspoken except for the silver which I think is a lovely alternative to white. I didn't go for white on purpose because that optic white is not that easy to combine and that silver gray is just a little bit softer. So very keen to hear what you think of that color, but let me show you some of the others. I forgot to say that the baggies that I was wearing in the gray color, the matching baggies to this vest were the medium length ones, the regular length ones. And this is a pair of the long length in the slate colorway. So I'm showing you this combination because I think it's such a nice color combination to have the uh, slate and the medium gray together. It's really classy, it's really soft, and it's a really, really nice combination. So um, you can then, of course, add a duster to it or can wear a top underneath even, uh, depending on what size you choose for this vest top. Let me show you the vest top one size bigger and then I can start playing with tops underneath as well. So this is this silver gray vest top in a size two, bit of positive ease instead of negative ease. So easier to wear under tops underneath, but, and of course a little bit more contrast with the slate baggies and let me now show you, because of course I can grab one of the uh, medium grey anytime tops or love tops. I'll check what I've got. And no, not love top, anytime top, because the love top I don't have in that medium grey. So anytime top in the medium grey, underneath the silver grey vest top and then with the slate baggy, so you can see all three colours together. There we are. Anytime top and grey, long baggies in slate, and then the vest top in the uh, silver grey colour. If you don't like the idea of a lighter top over the top of a darker one, of course I could grab the damson instead. Here we go. Damson in a size two, rest of the outfit the same. Let me show you the navy in the baggies because then you can see how the damson and the navy compare and that will show you that the damson has a little bit of green in it. So this is the navy, navy baggies, rest the same. So it shows you how the navy compares with the damson and also reminds you that the navy is a really, really nice dark navy. It's a deep, proper, true navy and um, Fin almost finishing off now, I'll also show you what the uh, black looks like against the damson. And it's also a bit of a reminder, of course, with this navy and then with the black coming up, that those play suits are going to come in navy and black as well. I made two switches because I realised that I hadn't shown you the love top yet in combination with the vest. If you already have um, a pair of baggies. I've put the medium length back on just to show you again the difference in length. I think they're both extremely wearable, uh, both lengths, even when you're tall like me. Um, and then, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, this is a size one love top. This is a size two of the vests. I will put the size one vest in the berry back on so you can see how, how that fits and compares because you can wear the size, the, the same size on top of each other. You don't have to size up for the vest, but that looseness may be something that you prefer depending on how fitted the under uh, pinnings are, the under layers are. So in my case, I think this is a really nice combination to have the, the uh, large baggies and then the size one love top and then a size two vest over the top if I wear it as a as a top like that um, but I'll show you the size one in berry as well goes with the other colors as well with the um, 
uh, trousers that we have, the, the baggies that we have, we've got the slate with a matching top. We have the grey with a matching top, as you had seen already. And um, of course, we've got the navies as well with matching tops. And any of those can serve as sets that you wear underneath these vests. If you like that idea of a long vest over the much shorter top that's underneath, then that's a really nice option to give you an extra outfit just with your uh, cocoons. And then, of course, that vest is very wearable across the rest of your wardrobe as well. Let me show you the size one berry. Here it is, the rest of the outfit the same. So this is a size one love top and a size one vest top over the top of each other. You can see it doesn't pull anywhere. They're perfectly matched. It's just a matter of whether you like that slight tightness and the slight fittedness or whether you prefer uh, a slightly more oversized look. And because it is stretchy, that your movements aren't in any way constricted. And because of those A-lines, they uh, skim over the rest of your body. So you can just feel comfortable. And as is always the intention with layer cake, you can put them on and just uh, inhabit your body like the way you inhabit your outfit and not consciously have to be conscious of your body. I think it's a it's a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful machine that we have and we tend to be so hard on it. So appreciate your body by dressing it in clothes that feel great. I hope that these contribute to that feeling that you love my offering this time. Like I said, all the vest tops and the berry and damson play suits are available to be sent out immediately. The navy and black play suits are going to follow in a couple of weeks time. They're still being produced as we speak, but I could not wait any longer. I was so keen to share what I've got already with you. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you again very soon.